Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching again, and we're playing my Star Catcher game here. So we've created a game that uh, can either use the, uh, the keyboard or the mouse to uh, play. And as you can see, I have it on the mouse settings right now. And um, as I collected, I noticed an error there coming off our last video lesson. Our last video lesson showed how to make the start screen and get back to the start screen at the, after we collected all the stars. Um, but what happens is it pauses on the 90 and doesn't get to the point where it shows 100 for the score right there. So that's going to be one of the things I fix. I'm also going to put in a little timer here. Um, and um, that's about it for this lesson. So let's get started. Um, right up the bat on the top, we're going to be using a truncate feature. Okay, and um, the truncate feature, by the way, the truncate feature will only work on Python 2.6 and above. So if you have the popular 2.54, um, you have to use uh, mod f and kind of be uh, clever with uh, the output that gives you. Um, so I am using 2.6 here, so I'm going to go ahead and import the math. <coughs> and that's going to be set to go for making the uh, uh, timer and now I'm going to fix the nine the, the score not getting up to a hundred and kind of resetting at the wrong point and there's that's definitely an error so what I'm doing here is I'm finding our game loop here's my game loop and I'm going to reorganize things I need to do this anyways just for coding purposes I'm going to take all this uh, this whole section which uh, does the image display uh, and the target splitting etc and our, our very important uh, pie game display update I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to move it down to the north, towards the bottom, uh, right above uh, that if statement we put in last video lesson there. So what I have now is this image, um, and display updates, this section, is after the collision test, and then comes the pie game update, um, and then our if score check. So this order will fix that one problem, I believe. Let's uh, try running it. Hopefully I haven't made any errors. And I should see um, it score at, although we go up to 100, if I can catch it. Yeah, and it did, and it worked successfully. Restarted perfectly. So we have now a game that is working perfectly with the mouse. And at any time, you can come back to the code and switch it back to using the keyboard for the player. And I just want to show you one quick little thing. Since we're doing everything with variables and the way everything's being created is using variables, I am a math teacher, so um, I have an appreciation for that. I want to change the size of the game a bit just to make it a little bit different, 700 by 500. But this is all I have to change. And now when I run it and save it, you'll see it's slightly bigger. Everything is spaced out the exact same way. The stars will space out nicely at the beginning, as you saw. And here at the end, it'll space out nicely. And when you come back to the start screen, everything is still done at, uh, with uh, the way we use variables to be appropriately centered or at the right location. I like that size screen. I think I'm going to keep it there. On to the timer. So we're going to put a timer in that can show you how to do this part. I'm hoping that as I've showed other students how to make this game and what I've seen so far, is that you take the theme of this game and change it, mix it up. I've had students uh, avoid objects instead of collect objects, or a mix of both, some uh, like bombs that they can't hit and uh, other things that they do want to collect. Uh, completely different themes, not just space themes, but uh, rabbit going across a field avoiding the farmers. I mean, very clever stuff coming from the students, and all because I give them this template, and then they take it to different levels. All right, so let's get to the starting area and the very first thing I need to do is I need to start the timer I'm going to make a new variable called timer we're going to start it at zero and we're going to come down here to the start screen so I got the timer equals zero right with score equals zero and that's at the beginning part of our code of our game program now I've got my start screen loop here and I am going to copy and paste the exact same way I did the score and just change it to be for the timer. Ooh, I've got to do it here um, as well in the start screen, as well as up here um, in this loading score text area. So I've copied and pasted down here. So let's go ahead and do this one first. Everywhere where I see the word score, 
I'm going to put the word timer. I'm going to highlight the word timer and copy it and make it a little faster. And change some other things here. It's not the player score. This is the timer. The stuff in green is what you'll see on the screen. We're using a string command to convert it to characters to be placed up as a, like text. And it's going to take whatever the timer is. Okay, I should have, could have just pasted it there. Right here, I'm going to paste in my timer. And up right here, I'm going to paste in my timer. Now, I have not made this variable yet. I'm supposed to do that first. Let's come back up here and do that. This one, we need three lines all copied. And now I'm going to get below it, paste it in. So just like we've done the score text, I am now going to make a timer text here, or have a timer text variable there. Whoops, I lost something there. Here we go. Oops, lost something there. Here we go. Timer text. And this is now, this is the exact same line I've already made below. Should be identical. I could copy it. We got it going here. This is the word, let, the word timer, the variable timer. We're going to keep it the same color format. I have no problem with that. Um, box size. I'm going to use that at like a temporary variable so it grabs the timer text size that I just made above does a get rect, which gets the size of it. And now we're going to grab the width of that. We're going to grab the width of that and use it in an, an exposition here called a timer exposition. So no matter how what size, as you just saw, I changed my width um, of the whole game. No matter how I do that, uh, what size the game it plays, this will all be nicely centered still and at the right place. Um, let's see, double checking things. Timer text, we're going to use the game font render, timer, and then I use the string command. It's going to be all red, RGB, all red there. Box size, like a temporary variable, just using it, uh, grabbing this variable here and getting the rect on it. Very good. And then new variable, timer exposition, and using the temporary variable box size retrieved above. That should work perfectly. Let's go ahead and take a look at this now. Timer text, nice. Timer, good. Timer text again, and timer exposition. This size 20, uh, that's going to be a problem. That's right at the same Y coordinate as the player score. So let's move that down to about 50. And I might have changed this one down here on you before, like I did this off video screen. Please forgive me. Down below where you're doing the first instruction text, you might want to change that to 80 to space it out a little bit before. Okay, and maybe a 1 and 1 here on the, supposed to be true-false values there, I believe. So I had it at a 2, strangely. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so now, before I do anything, let's run it. Okay, timer. Yes, timer is up here. Everything is nicely spaced out if you did make those same changes. Um, I'm not going to play the game, because if I play the game, it's not going to do anything. It won't be incrementing the time if I actually try to. The timer's not even there because it's not on the game blitting in the game loop. And that is what I'm going to do next. So now I have these very important lines. I'm going to take these important lines from the start screen, and I am going to cut them. Whoops, how did I cut them? Excuse me, how did I do? I am going to highlight them and copy them. And now I'm going to come down, and where we have all our update stuff, I am going to add to that section right there, the timer stuff. Now the timer is still at zero. I have done nothing to increment it. So that will be my last thing I need to do here before I display it. So I can do that by making a little section above here. We will use some um, comments so we know what we're looking at later. Excuse me. So this is the timer increment. And the way we're going to do that gets a little tricky here. Okay, and because it gets a little tricky, I'm going to play around in the shell here to give you an idea how, to, how we're doing this. We are going to need to use the seconds and clock. I'm going to copy this. Okay, and I'm going to put that up with the timer. I know that we use that in other places as well. We don't need it there now. I'm going to delete that. But I'm going to use that as uh, part of the way it controls the game, how fast the game's running, as we talked about in one of the earlier videos. But I'm also going to use that with the timer. So just to show you what we're going to do is I'm going to come back up and remind you what we did at the beginning of the game. We established that clock as a variable. And it uses a pi game, time command, and a clock function. So basically it loads up the clock right here. 
And what seconds is doing is it's grabbing the seconds um, by using the tick of that variable clock right here. And that will give me the milliseconds that have gone by since the last tick. And then divide that. Okay? So seconds then is a floating number because it's dividing by 0, 0.0 here. So it's a floating number, which is a, uh, a, a rational number with a decimal. Of, um, and what we're going to do, let's come over to the shell. I'm going to play here a bit. Don't worry about all the red here. The red is just from when we quit the game. I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing, but it hasn't been, a, hasn't hurt anything yet. So I'm going to do that same exact line that we had above. I'm going to do the clock equal the pi game a time clock function. So it's loaded it up. I believe I pasted in the seconds earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this is now going to get the seconds loaded up, and that is the seconds since I hit the time clock originally. So if you do this line, and then hit return on it, and then do the seconds line again, you'll see that it's been 12 seconds then since I've done the the uh, uh, the, uh, the tick command, uh, the original tick command. Let me double check that. It seems to be... Mm -hmm. Sorry about the pause there. Uh, just double checking everything. I had everything down. But you can see what I'm trying to do here. The screen definitely flashed up a little different when you when I came back here. But you can see that what I'm doing is I'm taking the seconds and I'm using the clock tick and grabbing that. And then I use the timer and add the seconds on it. And then you can see the timer is incrementing. And it has been incrementing since I've been doing that here, the 13, 18, 41, since I've reset it at zero. So this is what we're going to be doing. But the problem is, is you need to display this. And so what we need to do is we need to display it, have another variable that has a truncated value of this for display. So let's bring the screen back over here and try to come back and do that. So seconds is set up nicely right there. And now I say the timer is going to be added, to, or the seconds is going to be added to the timer with the plus equal command. Okay, so the timer is at zero, then the seconds go by. Let's say a one second goes by, it increments it up. And then we'll keep doing that as it loops through. So if it loops through in, in a very short time, we will still... Um, get the accurate seconds appearing on the screen. But the problem is, is we need to display, not the timer here, we need to display um, a different variable because the timer is a floating number that has a long decimal attached to it. So what I'm going to do is create a different variable here called display timer is equal to the timer that just got incremented. And what I'm doing is not ruining the timer here um, by truncating it. And in fact, I forgot to truncate it. Let's truncate it. So display timer is going to be a math library game with a T-R-U-N-C truncate to cut off. As you see, it popped up right here because I'm using 2.6. So we're going to truncate the timer. And then down below, we are not going to display the timer. We're going to display the, pardon the double word there, display timer. Okay, so double check everything has got the way we want it to work. Timer text is displaying it. Uh, the blitz is the timer text perfect. Should be incrementing. Double check spelling. I think we might have something working here. Let's run it. Again, if I made a mistake, I believe it's a learning lesson for everybody. So I immediately started collecting the stars, but I did notice that the timer seems to be working at, and I don't have a stopwatch, at about the right speed. Okay, I think that's what we're going to do for today. Um, I have decided to add on another uh, video to this one. We are going to do um, something I've done with the students before in my class, um, in my uh, high school class. We are going to add in multiple levels. And in doing so, I'm going to teach you how to pass variables between the functions. Um, and so that gives you a neat lesson on the passing variables to the functions, as well as you how to create multiple levels with this. And the way we'll do that is we'll create multiple levels with a few stars at the beginning, and the, they will grow each time. Uh, thank you for listening, and thank you for liking uh, any of these pages and making your comments. Uh, your feedback is very important to me. Uh, I'm doing this for my students, but I figured you might as well uh, be in the audience as well, and I hope you're getting something from it. I'm David from Electric Teaching.